There it is. Boom. And, and it just blew out the bead on the other side. I should have put air in it, but I wasn't fast enough. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today doing a little bit of work on the Doodle Bastard. We're also going to talk about the updates on the 350Z. I didn't have any uh, videos earlier in the week because, well, I spent the whole weekend fighting with things on a 350Z. And also I had a household electrical problem. The genius that wired this house, uh, probably as far back as 1968, because it appears it still had some of the original aluminum wiring in it, and the aluminum wiring isn't the problem. If it's done correctly, aluminum wiring is actually okay. But in this case, some genius put damn near half the house on one breaker. So I was having problems with that breaker all the time, like to just, uh, poop, you know, because too many fans are on in the house. It's like all the fans in the house, every single ceiling light, the hallway, half the living room, two of the bedrooms, both bathrooms, all on the same breaker. Too much, way too much. For some reason, half the house on that breaker went off. The other half was still working. The breaker wasn't popping this time. So I went up in the attic and I discovered what was wrong. And it turned out the idiots, once again, they did not properly attach some of the aluminum wires proper with a coupler. So I went and got the proper uh, Aluma connectors for that, fixed the thing up in the attic. And while I was at it and I was up there, I actually pulled some of the wires out, connected them to some of the other breakers, and I separated a whole leg of wiring. So the living room is now isolated on its own. It's actually connected to the hallway in the house. So the hallway uh, electrical outlets are on that breaker too. Um, the rest on everything else on the other side still stays the same. Hopefully that'll be a little bit lighter of a load on the breaker since the living room does run the extra fan, has the TV, the stereo, and a bunch of things that do draw a little more power than the rest. In addition, I also installed a new light and a closet, an electrical outlet for the TV to plug into, and uh, put all that stuff on a separate circuit breaker, which is where my computers plug into. That I always isolated on a separate circuit. I like to keep them just separate from electric motors and everything else for interference reasons. Not that I've ever had a problem, but just the way I've always done it. So anyway, electrical works in the house now. Yay. I spent less than $100 for all of my upgrades, add-ons, and modifications. And um, I think we're going to start working on the Doodle Bastard today. So I'm looking at it here. One of the things that's a really big deal on it is it's, uh, it's got flat tires. The front tire is an absolute mess. It won't hold air. The back tire will hold air, but for a limited time. It seems to, to just leak out kind of quickly. So I think we need to get online and order some tires. Well, that was quick, <laughs> a lot faster than I was expecting. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and roll that intro and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hey, well, we're back. Figured I'd answer some questions about the 350Z that you see here behind me because so many people came to me and approached me and just offered me all kinds of help for the little parts that I needed for this thing to get it finished. Well, the good news is it's all reassembled, it's back on the ground, and I've been driving it all week. The bad news is I spent pretty much the whole weekend putting it back together, making adjustments to things while I had stuff apart uh, just to make it a whole lot easier. <laughs> But for those of you that extended help to me, for those of you that offered me suggestions or solutions, um, I'm sorry, I just, I didn't need them at that point, but I, I thank you so much for all the effort that you put in, really. But things are, are good, the Z runs great. Uh, the temperature is actually down to uh, 38 degrees coming out of the dashboard, and that was on an 85 degree day when I got this thing finished, so. That is absolutely incredible, and that is an achievement. Everything worked on the first try. It doesn't seem to be leaking any coolant anywhere. The pressures remain the same. They're constant, even after I checked them a few days later. Everything's good. I mean, I really can't say anything negative about it. A few people did ask, hey, duck man, uh, <laughs> did you have any leftover parts by the time you were done? Because you just took so much of it apart. And the answer is yes, I actually did. I did end up with a few extra parts because I did buy an extra evaporator. It came with an extra, um, expansion valve and extra couple of tubes but there are a few things that i didn't put in one of which was a little clip that's supposed to hold the two little tubes together it was really hard for me to get my hands up inside that area back behind the engine but in front of the firewall 
So I just, uh, I kind of skipped a step and didn't put the clamp in there. I probably should. I think I should put up a fight and put it in there. It'll probably give a little rigidity to those two pipes, especially the smaller ones, so that way it can support some of its weight off of the bigger one and stop it from falling apart or, or cracking. So that's something that I do need to do and I will get to. And the other thing was I left out one little screw out of the airbox up underneath the dashboard because I just couldn't reach it. It was way up in a blind spot. It was so hard to get to. It was really difficult to get it removed. And the fact is, uh, <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to get it back in without a fight. I gave it a couple tries. I kept dropping it. I said, enough. You know, the thing had about uh, 13, 14 screws on it or something. If it's missing one screw out of it in a really obscure, hard to reach location, it's still going to seal just fine. Good enough. Anyway, everything works. The heat works. The air conditioner works. The thermostat works. I can change the vent from inside to outside. Everything works. I figured for sure I would have an electrical problem because I played with so many of the connectors. I figured I might even have a mechanical problem because I removed so many of the little motors that make the little valves all open and turn. But no, everything went back together and it all worked on the first try. Well, while I had everything apart, I also went and attacked the marker lights because I had a marker light out on this side. And the only easy way to do it is by completely disassembling and removing the headlamp or getting in from up underneath the fender skirt, taking the wheel off, and yeah, it's it's a pain in the butt on these things. They're just they're not easy or meant to be replaced <laughs> in a simple, simple way at all. These things are worse for wear. There's a lot of micro cracks starting to show in them, and it's just, uh, it's a mess. But to my surprise, it wasn't just one marker light on either side. There's two in each side, and it turned out I had three of them out. This little guy went out down in here, and that one went out. I thought that was a reflector. I didn't even realize that was a light. And then on the opposite side, this one was out. That was the only light that was working. So again, while it was apart, I took care of the whole thing. And the only other fatality that I had while doing work on this car was these little plastic buttons. After 15 years, a lot of them just dried up, cracked, and just disintegrated. So I've got some new ones on the way. There's also a bunch of uh, them that go up underneath the car. And up around these plastics, a lot of them have been missing for a long time because, well, they just disintegrated. So, anyway, not a big deal. For about uh, $15, I got 200 of them coming. So there should be plenty to last me for a very long time. It's the first time I ever worked on an air conditioning unit. I understand the principles behind it. So at this point, um... I feel confident enough that I could even uh, build a custom one, let's say, to put into Gregory the Bus. So that will be coming in the future, so watch for it. Anyways, let's return back to the Duel Bastard. Well, I don't have any shade in this yard anymore, and it absolutely drives me nuts since the hurricane hit this thing and just it made just a total mess out of my yard. So I am somebody who is extremely fair-skinned, and I can't spend too much time in the sunlight. So I'm going to do the best that I can to get some things done here. But first we're going to pull off this front wheel and we're going to see if we can get that tire off of it. Um, sometimes pulling the tire off of these rims can be a real pain in the ass. The good news about the Doodle Bastard is these are kind of small tires and they're not steel belted or anything so they shouldn't be too hard to just, uh, well, cut them off if I have to. But, uh, well, let's go ahead and get started here. Looks like we've got a clip and what appears to be maybe a 16 or 17 millimeter nut that's on the end here. Wow, I managed to pull that out by hand. See that? There's Duckman fingers. <laughs> Alright, let's get some tools. Alright, turns out I was way wrong. This is a 19 millimeter. And you know what? It's already loose. That didn't take that much effort at all. I've never had the front wheel off of this thing, but I have had the rear. <laughs> Before I get any further though, I'm going to have to stick a couple blocks of wood up underneath the frame here to lift that front wheel up and uh, get that pulled out. <clears throat> there we go. I have to go grab a mallet if I needed one, but uh, it's like I might not need one. And yeah, maybe I will. dislocated bearings are rusty ooh they're notchy too that's not good 
Yeah, they're pretty, pretty notchy. Well, I don't know if we're gonna work with that now because I don't feel like taking this um, longer on this than it's gonna be because this is supposed to be a budget bike. And, you know, that's kind of a pain in the ass. But we will change those out, but that's not on today's list. They are still moving, but they are quite a bit notchy. These wheels are just dirty. I don't think they need to be painted. Yeah, they're just dirty. I'll clean them up real nice before we put them all back together. And I'm hoping that the valve stem is good and holding air. Okay, nonetheless, feet is already broken on this side. This side, we might be able to just, uh... Nope. They're much heavier duty than that. I might have to stick it to the vise. <laughs> if not, it'll go to the tire change, uh... Tire change tool over at D&D Cycles. I'll have them squeeze it for me. got the tire around the rim but clearly it's not seated on the bead everything is loose so what I'm gonna do is the opposite side the valves on this side the opposite side I'm gonna push it in as tight as I can just get it in there so it kind of seats you don't need to get it perfect because you're not going to get it perfect just go like that put the valve stem on the bottom because gravity and Make sure you've got your air pressure here. Now this one, you know, I almost might even be able to get the air into it because the bead is pretty close to getting seated the whole way around. But, you know, what's fun without using fire? <laughs> now this you gotta work kind of quick with because once you put the propane into there and you ignite it, it's going to pop. The flames will come out of it. But then those gases are gonna start to cool, so it will shrink and it'll pull the tire back off the rim if you're not fast enough to get air into it. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I screwed this up. But it's a lot easier if you have a friend helping you or even if you have somebody holding air on that valve at the same time as you're doing this. Um, there's a <laughs> few different ways you can go about it. But anyway, let's give it a shot. This is always fun and let's see what happens. You gotta kind of push down so that way that bead kind of sits tight on the rim because you don't want the gases to pop out of it. But you need just a little bit so you can still get a spark or a flame in there. There it is. Move fast, move fast. Did I get it? No, nope. it popped back off the bead. Damn it all. We'll try it again. Gotta move faster. Got him. Here it is. Now these are only supposed to take about five PSI. I'm going to over inflate it just a little bit because you want that bead to seat the whole way around. But uh, we more or less have it right now. In fact, it feels really flat, so. Helps if I put that on straight, doesn't it? Yeah, five PSI is nothing. I tend to over inflate these just a little bit because I'm so heavy. But there it is. We got us a, a wheel assembly, brand new tire on the old rim. These bearings are gonna to need to be replaced. I might even paint the wheels. I don't think they need it. I think they just need a good cleaning. I don't wanna overdo the Doodle Bastard. I kinda of like its rough and tough look that it's got. So I may just wind up keeping that, but there it is. That's how you set a tire bead all the way around that rim. That worked out pretty good. I'm surprised I got that to work here in the shop. I thought for sure I was gonna to have to go to the tire shop when I realized the vise here was too small. Got a bigger vise down below on the floor that probably would've done a better job, but it got it done. You notice I went with more of a tractor tread type tire instead of the knobbies. Just wanted something that looked a little more aggressive, so I figured that was it. And these are very square profiled. I hope that when you put air in them, that they balloon out. And it turned out I was right. They did go around. 
So that worked out quite well. This one, I had to cheat to get it off the rim. Just did not want to let go, and I've had that happen before, so I just simply sawzalled it, put a slot into it, and then once I got it a little bit off the bead over here, I took a set of bolt cutters cut, and I had the thing off in about two minutes. So that got the job done. This tire is really not in too bad a shape as far as dry rot is concerned, but if you feel it, it's just, it's tough and leathery. It doesn't feel rubbery like this tire does. It's just very, very leathery. In fact, you know what? This new tire overall is just a much more stiffer, firmer tire. I trust that more, especially going at speed. Well, anyway, these are junk. I guess we can put this wheel back on here. Should be able to just slot this right up in here. Get the bolt started on it. spacer up in here is put our nut back on all right it's ready to be torqued down I have no idea what the torque specification is of that, but uh, <laughs> because this bike came with no manual or service manual or any of that stuff, I'm just going to research as to what it is for that size bolt, get it torqued down appropriately, and uh, snug it up and put our pin in there and be done with it. Right, put our little pin in there. And why won't he seat? Anyway, after getting a closer look at this, I'm trying to put the cotter pin in, and it goes in about, uh, well, most of the way, and it stops. You notice it's not going in straight. It's kind of leaning off this way. That's because the hole is not drilled through the axle straight. So in order to fit the proper size pin in it, I have to either wallow the hole out bigger, straighten the hole out, or just use a really tiny, skinny little pin and drive it in all crooked. So there's some authentic Chinese manufacturing right there for you, piece of crap. Anyway, I'll get back to that. We're not riding it immediately anyway. Next on the list is this seat. This thing is just falling apart. The uh, wrapping on it just became incredibly brittle and falling apart. The foam, however, is in decent shape. This can be uh, salvaged and reused. Also, the uh, base plate that it sits on top of is in pretty good shape. It's got all kinds of holes drilled in it from all the different ways it was attempted to be mounted before. So what I think I'm going to do is not buy a new seat, because it seems like they're anywhere between $50 and $70. Way too much for one of these seats. Just way too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt it from here. I'm probably going to either weld or bolt on some little hinges to the side. And uh, I'll bolt the hinges to the seat bottom here and make the seat flip open this way with some sort of clasp on this side. Um, that will allow me to get to the electrics and do some work in here without having to unbolt everything because it's always been a pain in the ass on this bike and we're not going to do that anymore. So anyways, I'm going to rewrap the seat. I'm going to take the uh, old skin here and I'm going to uh, tear the seams out of it, lay it out, and make a template. And I have actually even nicer than this material for wrapping this kind of a seat. I think I can save the... Uh, the bead here that's on the edges. Yeah, that's actually still very pliable and in good shape. So I'll probably recover the bead, make some new skin here, put it back on, staple it to the base, and bolt it down once and for all and have a nice little seat that flips open. That's next on the list. I did inherit a sewing machine, so um, I'll be using Dad's sewing machine to make a new seat. I'm not quite sure what he was doing with a sewing machine or why he would even have one. It was quite a surprise to find it buried in the garage. But he used to do a lot with uh, World War II um, military uniforms. I think that might have had something to do with it. So anyway, I've got a sewing machine, which means I can make a new seat. But I think that's enough for today. So please, licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle belly. We get updates every time I upload a new video. Hopefully, I'll get some Volkswagen-related stuff coming up soon. Maybe work on uh, the bus over here. Maybe work on the Carmen Ghia over there. Let's see if we can get something done. It's been a, quite a while since I've gotten to turn a wrench on a Volkswagen or even done any welding or anything. It's just... 
I haven't had the time, and I probably will later this week. Um, my business partner I was supposed to leave town never did, so it turns out I'm still working with him this week. <laughs> and on a side note, uh, you haven't seen B in a couple videos uh, because she actually has the week off. She had some something happen in her life. She's dealing with it. She's having a hard time. So if you guys could hit her up on her social media and uh, you know let her know that you're there and that she means something to you, it would mean a lot to me. So please hit up DuckShit.net. Check out her social media. She's got Instagram. She's got a Twitter. She's got uh, Patreon. She's got a few other things on there, too, and you can hit her up in all those different places and um, show her a little bit of love. I think she needs it right now. Thanks a lot, you guys. We'll see you next time.